with that kind of praise, I'm sure someone's heart is open and ready to soak in what the word of God has for us today. Maybe we'll read it while standing so that uh, it is in the book of Ezra, chapter number three. Ezra, chapter number three, and we are looking at verse number one to verse number 13. Hallelujah. And we can read it, all of us. Uh, you don't have to look at what you have in your Bible. Just read what they give us. Can we go together? Read it as you want to hear it. Eh? On the first day of the seventh month, they began. In the second month of the second year, after their arrival at the house of the Lord in Jerusalem, Zerubbabel, Our Heavenly Father, we pray that that word, as we have read, will have meaning in our lives and in our spirit. For this we ask in Jesus' name. We may get seated. We'll ask the worship team also to get seated. We, we do thank God so, so much. Thank you for coming. Uh, we're so glad that uh, we are still following the protocol. And I, my prayer is that you don't follow protocol when you're coming to church. Because in church, like when I was coming out from the office, I'd forgotten my barakoa. But just getting up the steps, you realize the old, old man out. 
so I had to go back for it. But when you go to some places, you, you look okay. We pray that we are going to, to follow the protocol very well. There is a servant of the Lord, if he gets leave uh, by God's grace and get a ticket tomorrow, he will, be, he will come and minister to us next Sunday if we get the information tomorrow. His name, he's from South Africa. His name is Bishop Dr. Lemola from Pretoria, South Africa. He's a man that God has used. He has over 180 churches and he has a trained a Bible college that they train ministers and um, I know he will become a blessing to us. He's a father of four. But that is if he gets a ticket. We, I know getting a ticket now in this uh, era has not been very easy. People who want to travel cannot just travel the way they want. But let's pray for him. If he is available, he will bring the word of God in our three services uh, next Sunday. Uh, but if he doesn't show up, we will still minister. We are ready ourselves. We, if he doesn't come, God has called us. He is coming to help us. So for us, we will continue. The theme of what I want to share with you, if you have been following me for the last couple of Sundays, I've been looking for answers to various questions. And there is an answer that we are going to find from the scripture that we read, and the answer is, it is better to rejoice over what you have than weep over what you used to have. This will be the answer to overcoming disappointment. Let me say it again. It is better to rejoice over what you have than weep over what you used to have because this becomes the answer of disappointment. And we, we if you like, we, the story that we are reading comes to us in the year 537 BC. And the place is Jerusalem. And Ezra has brought people back so that they can come and help the rebuilding of Jerusalem war and rebuilding of the temple. If you like, they have been in captivity now for over 50 years. They still have 20 more years. But they have started, it is the first group that have started going back to Jerusalem through Cyrus, who is trying to help them that they can rebuild uh, the, their temple and rebuild Jerusalem. But if you continue reading other chapters, you discover it was not an, an easy game, but God was with them and God was helping them so that they can do what God had called them to do. The Jews went to work with vigor and determination. And if you were to divide the scriptures that we have read, you could divide them in a couple way. Verse 1 to 6, we read, first, their biggest task was to rebuild the altar. The second thing they did, verse 7 to 9, is they, they laid the foundation of the temple. Then they paused a little bit after a while to give public praise and celebration. The temple is not finished, but they stopped and celebrated. But also in the midst of all this, the fourth thing that you can find is that verse 10 and 11, as they paused for celebration, verse 12 and 13, something strange happens. There is screaming. There is crying. And the Bible records, if you are listening to them from far, you would not differentiate whether it was a cry or a shout of praise. In other words, if you are doing mathematics, then you will discover that if they have been away for 50 years, the people that will be crying will be people that went when they were a little bit old. So they were now over 50 years. But the guys that are rejoicing are guys that were 50 and below. Because for them, building a temple is something new. They are so excited about it. So they are so happy that they are coming. The stories that were told by the older people, now they have an opportunity to lay them down. So they are so excited about what is happening. But I want to say one of the things that disappoints all of us, or you can find you uh, being disappointed, are misplaced expectations. When you have misplaced your expectations in whatever area, if you misplace your expectation, uh, somebody made this joke and say sometimes we, we go to the wrong, um, we, 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 give, uh, we give honor to the wrong person 
thinking they will honor us. Even when we are supposed to go to God, we go to people, and people have a way of not seeing the good, but always seeing the bad that is happening. Misplaced expectation is one of the ways that can really disappoint us. And of course we all know at one time or another we'll be disappointed. And if you have never been disappointed, well, welcome to the club. One of these days you will. But for sure, all of us have been disappointed. Some of us started being disappointed when we were little children. Your mother, your father is promising. But they don't tell you the truth. They don't have all the money, but they promise. And you think this thing is going to happen, and, but it doesn't happen. A year goes and I... So disappointment can come. Friends break their word. They have promised you, but they break it. Marriage end up in divorce, and people had a lot of hope. Our children move away or run away or disappoint us. Our colleagues, they betray us. Companies that we have worked for many years, when they are laying people off, they also lay us. Doctors don't cure us, and we know, but sometimes we go to them thinking they will cure us. Our investments disappear. And I have had a few of those disappearance. Just the other day, somebody called me. I'd invested somewhere uh, to, to buy some piece of land somewhere. And uh, he called me because we were buying together. He told me, uh, Bishop, uh, the record don't show you anywhere. I said, fine. The record doesn't show me, so what do I do? So I knew, tulichezwa, ukiweka hapa, utapata. Ukiweka hapa, utapoteza. Ukiweka hapa, utapoteza. Sasa, weka. So pali niliweka, nafikiria hiyo ni ya kupotea. So we investments disappear. Our dreams are shattered. We have dreamt. And even the plans that we have laid and they are so well. You can write a good book uh, with the plans you have. Sometimes they go astray and we know it. Other Christians also disappoint us. And you know sometimes they disappoint us to a level that you, you, you are asking yourself, can so and so do this? Can so and so do this? So we live in a world of disappointment. Like again I want to say, if you have never been disappointed, it is coming. Now that I have warned you, be ready for it. Disappointment will come. But I'm sure I'm speaking to almost 100% of people that have a testimony of some disappointment somewhere. Disappointment. Even in a matatu, sometimes we are disappointed. You know, you go in, but there were some guys walikuwa wakipiga set. Na unambio, ne moja tuwa mebaki, unaingia, ui moja natoka. Na usama, dereva kwa nini uendi? Inibaki mtu moja. Mungina nakuja, set inatoka. So set ilikuwa na watu watano. Wevi watu, you know, and you get so disappointed or you get late where you're going. So, usiniambia ujakuwa disappointed. You have. And if you have not, welcome to the club and the world of disappointment. A few people that have been disappointed and it is documented because they said something. You know, there are so many Kenyans that have been disappointed but we don't say much about us and sometimes when we say it, you, have no, you cannot quote it anywhere. But there is an English author called Joseph Edison, who declared our real blessing often appear to us in shape of pain, shape of losses, and shape of disappointment. This is an author. And after writing so many things, he discovered out that even some of the stories that he was writing, it is the stories of pain, and somebody learns something from pain, is the story of losses, Somebody picks something from losses. It is something to do with the disappointment. And it is also recorded Alexander the Great. He cried and wept. Why? Because there was no other world to conquer. You know, you conquer so many worlds until you are so disappointed. It is like Goliath. You remember the story of Goliath? No wonder Goliath was not in a hurry. He knew in a time when they choose one guy, he will kill him. So, he is there every morning, and they are shouting, hey, you servants of Saul, send someone. He was waiting for someone to kill. But I normally say when I read that scripture, no, he was waiting for David to be anointed and to have the blessings of becoming a king so that he can fight on behalf of the Lord. So, Alexander... Then someone 
those that have done law, maybe would have met this person called Hugo. Hugo Grotius was, is the father of the modern international law. He said this, I have accomplished nothing worthwhile in my life. People that are disappointed, even with life and the things that you have done, you still feel, I have done nothing. The sixth president of the U.S., his name was John Quincy Adams, wrote in his diary, my life has been spent in vain and idle aspirations. And yet, he became the president. Disappointment. They come to us. Somebody wrote this on his tombstone when he died. He said, write this. And they wrote about it. His name is Louis Stevenson. He said, here lies one who meant well, who tried a little, but failed much. So people walk through disappointment. Another president of the U.S. called Abraham Lincoln, in 1858, he was asked this. How do you feel, uh, how do you feel after losing your Senate to Stephen Douglas? Because he was standing for Senate before he stood again for president. He had tried many things, but he was failing. But Abraham Lincoln is asked, how do you feel after losing? And then this is what he said. I feel like the boy who had his toe hurt. And you know when you are told the big toe in Meumia, watoto upiganduru. So he says, I feel like that boy, but I am too big to cry and too badly hurt to laugh. That's what he meant. Ni kama ni megongu wa kidole ile kubwa. Niko na uchungu na mimi si mtoto siwezi lia lakini hata kucheka siwezi cheka kwa sababu nimeumizwa kabisa often our assumptions are unstated deep down we believe that if we do certain things others will treat us in certain ways we believe that if i helped you you're going to behave in a certain way but it doesn't work that way it doesn't work that way. There are people that have gone out of my way to help and assist. But when it comes to hurt, they will hurt you even more than people that you have not. But as we treat each other, it's like we think, oh, I treat you, then you will look to me well. We assume that we have earned certain things out of life. But if those expectations are not met, people don't appreciate it. We are so disappointed and we feel like life has no meaning whatsoever. There is correlation here between good mental health and having assumption that much reality. So that there is some strong correlation there. But there is also high correlation between misplaced assumption and variety of emotional problems including depression. But simply we are disappointed when things don't go the way we thought they were going to go. 2020, we woke up. We had dreams. We declared, this 2020, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. Then March comes. We are disappointed. Now, the old people were disappointed because they remembered how good things used to be. But the young people are rejoicing because what they were told by the old people, now they had an opportunity to see it come to pass. But when the old people are putting up the foundation, they know they cannot match the foundation of Solomon because they don't have all the resources. But the young people are so excited that, oh my God, we are going to have Jerusalem, we are going to have a temple here, a temple we have not seen a temple. Wherever we were, there were no temples. But we are going to see a temple. They were so excited about it. There are three things that I think are necessary which we must do like the Jews did. 
every time you have found yourself in some really disappointing positions, these three things can help you. Hopefully. Number one, I would call it new dedication. New dedication, which is rebuild the altar. New dedication, rebuild the altar. The returning exile began by rebuilding the altar. So they could offer sacrifices to God. They started by rebuilding the altar. Verse 1 notes that the other people, as one man, assembled in Jerusalem, and the two leaders knew what to do. Joshua and the high, the high priest and Zerubbabel, the man who led the exile back to Babylon. They knew what they ought to do. And from verse 1 to 6, all what they did was first of all to rebuild the altar. Imagine they had not sacrificed. Even the young people did not know what sacrifices were. But here they are and the first thing the priest and the leader of the team does, let's rebuild the altar. My friend, it doesn't matter what has happened to us through this year which is ending. I know that what God wants us to do so that this disappointment doesn't carry us over to the next year is that we need, first of all, if there was no altar, if the altar died because of corona, the first thing that we need to do is to rebuild it. Get some place and build and rebuild your altar. You don't compare it with the other one. No, don't. Forget about the other one. Just put up an altar. Maybe the altar you're going to build is a small one because you are not working where you used to work. Maybe you're not even working. Maybe you are listening to me now and you're away from Nairobi because when Corona hit and you are displaced and you are sacked, you went away. I have some good news for you. Rebuild the altar. Look for a place that you can build an altar for God. Now when they build the altar... I am so amazed. I was looking at the book of Leviticus because it's like all the, of the sacrifices that are mentioned in Leviticus that was the first thing that people did. They were not in a hurry. And because this was not done one day. No. They did it for many days. They, 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 after they built the altar, they made offerings for the Feast of Tabernacle. After that, they presented the regular burnt offerings, the new moon sacrifices, the sacrifices for all the appointed sacred feasts of the Lord, as well those that brought free will offerings to the Lord. And this was done on the first day of the seventh month. They began, they began to offer burnt offering to the Lord, though the foundation was not done. Priority is important. I have to have a new dedication and know what my priorities are. Imagine if Corona would hit us again and we, it finds us not prepared. Actually, I was even thinking, Samson, I was thinking that if Corona was to hit us again as a church, our school, the teacher should not go home without pay at, for a whole year. We should now work out so that we have some money for a whole year. You know, Actually, we should have money for seven years like uh, uh, Joseph did in Egypt. Because sometimes we are met like, you know, there you are. You don't know what to do. You are asking each other, where are we going to get this money? And there is no place to get it. And even the staff, the pastors, we have to find ways of cutting their salaries. Why? Because we were not ready for it. A Joseph need to arise and you are the Joseph. The first thing that you need to do is to build or rebuild an altar. If it is broken, rebuild it. And give all the offerings and sacrifices that ought to be done before you do anything. And I pray that as a church, we are going to get to that point where we are going to do it. Because God is giving us another chance. Corona is rising. But we are going to build the altar. We are going to build the altar before we start rebuilding the temple. Why? Because worship must always come first. Adoring the Lord must always come first. I know when you are praying, you only pray for yourself. Oh God, give me this, give me that. I think God needs to turn us around. So that where we are, we lift up our hands and worship the King of Kings and declare that he is Lord 
and besides him there is none other and we give offerings and sacrifices to the Lord. One of the things that suffers immediately you have a crisis like we have is our giving. It suffers a lot. But I'm telling you these guys are captives. But the Bible records they even gave some money to the mansions and carpenters. They even made sure seed on entire. They have taken some things there. They have given them some, some oil and so on. Why? So that they can cut timber for them and bring it to them. They were ready. We start with the sacrifice. We adore God. And when we start right, the story will always end right. The second thing that I find from this passage, there was new obedience. New obedience. You see, for new obedience, these guys had to go back and do it again by following the things that the Lord had given them earlier. New obedience, they relayed the foundation. Having rebuilt the altar, and thus established their relationship with God, which is number one, the Jews proceeded to lay the foundation of the temple. And this involved a massive cleanup effort. Remember that when they came back, they found the city basically ruined. It was all destroyed. But they have to work out and relay the foundation again. They have to send some food and drink and oil to Sidon and Tyre so that these people would bring timber to them from Lebanon to Joppa so that they can pull it for them. Zerubbabel, son of Shachel, Joshua of Zadok, and the rest of the brothers, the priests, and the Levites, all who had returned from captivity to Jerusalem, began the work. And I thank God, the workers, most of them, were not there when Solomon was building the first one. Because the Bible says, the Levites, appointing Levites 20 years of age, and older. So these are people that well, they hear the old people and then they put a stone they put it on. The old were there to help them as they work on what God had called them. Two things are very critical in the new obedience. Number one, they committed themselves to follow the Lord in details of life. Verse 2 and 4 emphasize it that when they were rebuilding the altar, they did it according to the law. That is, they followed the details of what God told Moses to do in the wilderness when you redo the altar. Do it according to the law. Do it according to what the word of God is helping us to do. Do it according to our conviction of what God is leading us to do. And you know, at this point, almost a thousand years have passed since God told Moses about it in Mount Sinai. But, because it was recorded, they were able to pull the records and work on it again. You know, empires had come and they had gone. The judges came and their reign was gone. Saul came and his reign was gone. David came and his reign was gone. Solomon came and his reign was gone. Then the divided kingdom came and finally they are all in captivity. But when they come back, they come back as one. You see the biggest challenge when they were going out, they were divided. But when they are coming back, they are coming together. May God help us. Yes, we could have run. You know I normally say when there is trouble... People run. Hata kuambia mtu natoroka umuambia. Nasema, niki muambia alafu waniambia nisiende. Ta muambia ni kama nimeenda. You know, ni uko hapi? He, niko karatina. Oh, karatina sindi yo nasikia diyo kwenu? He, niko, kara, niko kwetu. Kwa nini ulienda? He, kama ningia kuambia si bicho bunge na mea ni kakae. Nanani analipa nyumba yangu. You know those kind of things. But now that God is going to Bring us back again. Let's come and hold the fault and do what God has called us to do. Secondly, they laid the foundation in spite of the enemies around them. We will relay, we, we are going to lay the foundation again regardless of what the enemy, coronavirus, the enemy, 
the people that have no faith and that don't t- talk good about our God and our king, we are going to relay, we are going to lay the foundation again in spite of or regardless of the enemies. And these guys had many. In fact, the enemies were so many. But these guys decided it doesn't matter. We are going to do what God has called us. Don't miss this point. When you are disappointed and you don't know what to do, take a lesson from the Jews. They learned three lessons. Lesson number one, do what you know is right. Lesson number two, do what you know is right. Lesson number three, do, no, do what you know is right. If you know it is right, do it. I know some of you are looking for three points. It's only one repeated three times. You don't need more than that. <laughs> when you know this is right, just do it. Do it. Do what is right. Do what is right. Do what is right. You cannot stay in bed. Wake up. Someone needs to clean the floor. You cannot stay in bed. Someone needs to pay the bills. You cannot stay in bed. Somebody needs to get the trash out. You cannot stay in bed. Somebody needs to be in the office. You cannot stay in bed. Someone needs to be taken care of if you're a doctor. You cannot stay in bed. Uh, Oh yes, you need to work on the curriculum. You cannot stay in bed. You cannot stay in bed. A matato need to be driven. You cannot stay in bed. Someone needs to be in the data. That's why we are airing what we are sharing from the church to you wherever you are. Can you imagine if everybody is asleep, the media is asleep, what would you do? We cannot. We will do what God has called us in spite of what is happening around us. Someone has to see the patience. You rise up. Someone has to grade the papers. You rise up. Don't stay in bed. Don't let your discouragement keep you from doing what you know you have to do. And I normally tell people, Kenya, we have everything that can discourage you. Kenya. Kenya is amazing. Kenya is so amazing. Hata kuna wimbo ulisema Kenya inchi ya ajabu. Tuliimbiwa zamani. Inchi ya ajabu. But the ajabu is this. This guy is dying of corona. But this guy over here is stealing from this one. Right now, and, and let, me, let me say this. I'm not for no or for yes. I'm, I haven't gotten to that point yet. But you know what? Both the camps are truthful. All what they need is to sit down and agree. They are truthful. But you and I need to be more truthful that what they have written for us will benefit the politicians only. Period. More ladies in parliament. I hope Madam Betha might uh, represent uh, Embu as uh, a senator. More constituencies, right? Who are they benefiting? The MPs, right? The question is, who will pay? It's you. So when you tell them this wage is too much, they tell you, no, it is not. The minister will come from the MPs. You know why they have come back that way? It's because it had been taken away from them. Now they want them. So who benefits? Oh, building bridges with who? Then we leave others. You see, truth be told, these two guys are right. Oh, I wish they can sit down and help. Because whether you like it or not, he referendum sita kuja, sita enda, sita pita, sakini malipo ni badai, na malipo ataka yalipa, ni wewe. Kenya, inchi ya ajabu. Right now, even when we talk about locust, and we have some scientists in our church here that Help us to give us the information of the locusts. They tell us locusts equal. 
but because lockers zinakula kashamba ka yule mtu ambaye hata chief hamheshimu kashamba kadogo kako huko doesn't bother Don't let discouragement <laughs> keep you from doing what you know you have to do. Even when it comes to voting, please, 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 please. If, if the church would say no, I would say no here. And I know I said no twice. I don't mind to say no again three times. Because what I said no first did not change in the second. That's why I said no again. If it doesn't change, we'll see what. But my vote, although I said no, there are some people in church. They struggled a lot. Actually, there is someone who left the church then because they said, ni kama ni nasukumia watu, waseme no. But I wasn't. I was just hearing, you know, personal views are personal views. You know? If you can't keep big promises, keep your small ones. Don't allow disappointment to rob you. When you know what to do, do it. If you can't follow the big plans, then follow the small ones. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you cannot see 10 steps from here into the future, then take only two or three steps. Or just take one step in front of you. If you cannot see the steps in the future, then take two or three steps just now, right here where you are. Somebody called John C. Maxwell, who is a motivational speaker, says, the smallest act of obedience is better than the greatest intention. So I will not live with intention. I will rather have a small act, but I do it now. If you cannot obey God in some great or grand guest, then obey him in small issues of life. Obey him in small issues of life. Do what needs to be done and do it for the glory of God and you will have an answer for your disappointment. Thirdly, a new priority. They resolved to praise the Lord. When the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priest in the vestment and with the trumpets and the Levites, the son of Asfa, with the symbols, took their places to do what? Just to praise the Lord. Yani, yani, I, I don't know. It's like becoming crazy. Hata ujajenga kitu, lakini unanza kuselebrate. Unanza kusifu. Angalia tempo hii. Angalia vile itaka vyoku. Angalia umaria diwak. Yesu, we mungu wetu usifiwe, you know. What I'm trying to say is that you have to learn to change from your disappointment by learning even to thank God for the small victories. Kadogo, kadogo tu. Ay, mungu, tumueka foundation. Hehehe. Si utuaza ita watu wakuja turukaruka kwa foundation. Turukaruka kwa foundation. Tumshukuru mungu. There are some of us that have to wait until it is done mwisho kabisa. You see, praise is a choice, not a feeling. So I have to make a choice to praise God, not to wait for the feeling. You aren't supposed to wait for the feeling. You, know, you aren't supposed to wait until you have some good feelings. The Bible is commanding us in everything give thanks for this is the will of God. Even the little bits that happen, let's learn to praise. Because praise it's not a feeling. Praise is a choice and you have to make it regardless of what the situation is that I'm going to praise the Lord. Let us praise the Lord even when Corona has hit us. Let us praise the Lord even when our politicians are having problems because as we praise the Lord is going to minister to them and change their lives. Praising God. Praising God. So why did the end people rejoice? Because Babylon was all they knew. But now they have, they had not even seen the Solomon temple. They only remember what the older people were telling them. They are so excited. Oh, I'm going to be a part of this. There are four lessons that you can learn very quickly from here. Four, le four life lessons that can help you uh, learn through. Number one, 
Yield your memories and your dreams to the Lord. Yield your memories and your dreams to the Lord. Memories are good. Yield them to the Lord. Your dreams are good because they're in the future. Give them to the Lord. Was your past better? Was your past happier than your present? Yield it to the Lord. Was your past filled with sadness and pain? Give it to the Lord. Do you have great dreams? Do you have bright hopes? Do you have big plans for the future? That's wonderful. Give it to the Lord. So give your memories and your dreams to the Lord. Secondly, accept your present situation as from the Lord. To accept does not mean to be passive. It is not that I'm going to, to, to resign passively to the problems of life. No. Accepting is saying, Lord, I will still minister even when there are only 15 people. Lord, I will still minister even when you have given me 500. And even when the 500 left and I'm given back my 100, I will still minister. In other words, as I accept the fate of Corona, I will do what God has called me to do. And that is why some of us, even with the Corona, God has prospered us. May the Lord remember you. But don't, don't keep on in the lane of disappointment. Learn something. Accept where you are. Thank God for where you are. But continue doing what God has called you to do because God is sovereign. Number three, resolve to obey God right where you are. You're looking for an answer of your disappointment. Don't. It is when your hopes are too high. Just accept. Accept. You know, Malay say, it, life, is, it, life is not fair. And why it is not fair? Because we look at it with the eyes of men. Life sometimes can appear like it is not fair. Just like Solomon was saying, even the race is not to the swift. But there is something that he said there in, 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 in ecclesiastics that chance and time is given. Now it all depends with what you are going to do with what has been given. So we cannot say life is unfair. Life is fair. What are you doing with what God has given you? And it is good for us to obey the Lord right where we are. We may find a thousand excuses not to do the things we know we ought to do. And you know it is little by little when we miss to thank God we give excuses. Little by little those chaos, those unfinished projects, those uncompleted uh, projects, those phone calls that are not returned, those that are left un un undone, goals that are not met, they can slide you to bottomless pit. But I want to thank God where I am. Oh, thanking God. Blessing the name of the Lord for where you are and whatever you, you are doing. Your willingness to do what needs to be done may change the way things are. Your willingness. Ecclesiastic 9 and 10a says, Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. Finally, praise God for his goodness in spite of your circumstance. Wow! You know, sometimes when you, when you preach and you're just about to finish and you see the watch over there, sometimes you feel, wow, Lord, thank you that I've been able to finish. But bad was Jamaliza. Nikona point. Kamoja. I would like you to say this after me. All right? Say this. It is better to begin small with God than not to begin at all. Let's say it again. It is better to begin small with God than not to begin at all. What does that mean to you? Begin it. Doesn't matter how small it is. Begin it. The second one that I want you to repeat so that you can carry it. It is better to rejoice. Say this after me. It is better to rejoice over what you have than to weep over what you used to have. Let's say it again. It is better to rejoice over what you have than to weep 
whether or, or, over what you used to have. Because you know what? Disappointment is a tricky emotion. It is not wrong to remember the past and certainly not wrong to grieve over what you lost. But if our loss was caused by our own stupid choices, then grieving may keep us from making the same mistakes again. So it has these flaws. It's a, it has a tricky emotion. But eventually there comes a time when you must move on. And it is at that point our beginnings are important. We begin small. We do not despair. Whether it is a small thing, we learn to praise God. You see, even when God wanted to save the whole world, he, used, he gave us a little baby, Jesus. And Christmas is just around the corner, the savior of the world. So what have, have I said in this Ezra 3 verse 1 to 13? I've said this. It is better to rejoice over what you have than to weep over what you used to have because this is the answer to overcoming disappointment. I've said misplaced expectations are the ones that cause us to fall into being disappointed. But we said, there must be a new dedication. We have to build the altar. There is a new obedience. We have to lay down the foundation again. There is a new priority. We have to resolve to praise the Lord. And then, lessons of life. Yield our memories and our dreams to God. Accept your present situation Resolve to obey God right where you are and praise God for goodness in spite of your circumstance. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, that is the answer. But Father, having an answer then, we need to look back at that question so that we can answer to that question that you, disappointment, you have missed it again. Because I will thank God where I am with what I have. My memories of the past, though good or bad, and my dreams for the future, though bright and very clear, both I want to give them to the Lord so that I can rejoice in the Lord of my salvation today. Indeed, this is the day that the Lord has made and we are going to rejoice and be glad in it when it is called this day. I want to bless everybody who was listening to us. Father, may you give them the answer to their disappointment. For this we ask in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. The Lord bless you. Thank you so much for listening to the word of God.